Senator Rihanna, welcome you to the night. Thanks very much. I do join Phil in acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay tribute to their history, their culture, and their ongoing contributions to our community. Uh, as Phil has outlined, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, uh, Bill's massive contribution, and Jenny will run through what Bob has done. Um, but um, I have worked with Bob and did want to say just a couple of things because my parents also knew Bob, and one of the things I can remember is him saying what an amazing public speaker he was. Uh, and had an incredible dedication, not to just the issues that we know that we spent so much time working on, but that incredibly important commitment to involve people, so people become part and build movements, which I think is one of the common themes to so much of the work of people here um, and the work of Bob and Bill. So I certainly wanted to acknowledge that, Bob, and I have the fortunate position that Phil and myself um, Bob um, and other people here working on a very important campaign to win World Heritage listing for Royal National Park and the other surrounding parks there as well. So there is that connection. Um, what I was also thinking with regard to um, Bob and Phil and probably was sharing with you how this function came about is that um, Phil and myself and Bob have a little tradition going that each January we catch up for dinner. Uh, and walking down the street, um, Phil and I were just talking about, you know, again, what I think many of us have been commenting on. But the contribution is quite extraordinary um, from Bob and then Bill. And then when I realised that they both come from the Shire, there just seemed to be too much of an opportunity to miss. And in many ways, have a responsibility to acknowledge, celebrate, and be inspired by all this work. So with, with regard to Bill, it's really impressive. And in some ways, you could say, that Bill, born in 1922, has been her very ordinary life for so many of Australians. He's born, he goes to school here, school's tough, he leaves school fairly early to get a job, um, ends up um, fighting the Second World War, comes home, is able to get a home in the Shire eventually because of the, uh, the housing loans that were available at that time, and then basically has one job for most of his life with the PM, um, Postal, Postmaster Generals. But within that, that very ordinary life is the extraordinary life of the courage um, and you know, caring and courage is the words that I was thinking when I was coming down here today. For the world, for the people, speaks often of his children and grandchildren. So when I caught up with him recently, because so I realised when you've got to speak like this, there's things that you don't know, we did speak quite a lot about the Second World War because that was something that comes up quite often when Bill is um, interviewed uh, for the incredible climate actions that he's now involved in extensively. <coughs> uh, he was um, on the Kokoda Trail, he was wounded there. And when we were talking about <coughs> the war, he identified that one of the, one of the issues that was <coughs> confidence to him when he saw the war change from a nationalist war to a war against fascism. And they were deeply against war, and that came through as we talked time and time again. But it was a war, a war against fascism, and he had to join up. And his joining up is pretty spectacular. He actually um, cycled from Brisbane to Coffs, Coffs Harbour, and then took a train to Sydney to actually do to enlist. Uh, and so one of those, just one, one more of those um, little aspects of it that rolls along. Then in talking to Bill about the war, I, and this again came through as we talk about different aspects of his life and what he's been involved in, is identifying where there's inequality, when the wrong thing is being done. That's how he often described it. He said, you can see where the wrong thing is. And in the war, and some of these stories I haven't heard, is about how, how when the recruitment part goes along, those, those people who come from private school, who are very wealthy, they're immediately over here in this group become officers, and then you have this group over here where Bill is, and they're regular soldiers, and life's pretty tough. They often don't have, they've got poor equipment. It was described how he had never used a gun and has given a Tommy gun to go out and fight. You know, like extraordinary stories in terms of how soldiers were treated in the Second World War, War and too often since. Uh, um, and interestingly, uh, that compassion for the Jap many of the Japanese soldiers who regular soldiers in a similar position often with treated appallingly 
by the generals on their own side. So while recognising it's a necessary war, really identifying the inequality, the, the, the roughness, um, and I really, really wanted to emphasise overall in this aspect of our discussions, that when we talk about war, which Australians, as you know, with ANSAC, can be obsessive at times, we need to always remember the bad bits as well as the good bits, and not just allowed to be touched and go easy. So, so, so that, that was something that came through very, very strongly. Also, just before leaving that, Bill did speak, because I, I was very moved about this, particularly with what was happening from Trump and you know, the possibilities of nuclear war. Just the huge despair that war, war leaves us with. And clearly that, that had a huge impact on Bill throughout his life. Um, Bill um, also spoke about when he comes back to Australia that what they were given, you know, like you've been in the army, your army's looking after you one minute, the next minute you're out on the streets, is that the veterans had to line up for hand, handouts of clothes and ten pounds to set up that back into civilian life. About six years later, in 1951, he does get the loan to be able to live in this area, which obviously such a beautiful part of the world would, would, would have been clearly wonderful. Uh, Bill also <coughs> describes him getting involved in politics as it always seemed to me that there was something wrong. Uh, so I think that that again just shows that how he looks at the world, he doesn't just enjoy the world, in, in this part of the world you can enjoy it pretty much, but he questions where there is wrong things but uh, and he acts on it, which is a theme that comes through time and time again. Uh, he described um, to me about living near the hay market and how each day, at the end of the day, you would see women, obviously, women doing it pretty tough, going through the leftover vegetables that have been just scattered around. And again, a reminder of the inequality in this world and how it wasn't fair and it wasn't just and those were things that needed to change. Um, Bill also got involved in the Communist Party through the new theatre. He went there as a teenager and was incredibly inspired by a, a, a play that probably many of you, some of you have seen, and many of you have probably heard about uh, Waiting for Lefty, which was uh, by Clifford O'Getz, a very famous uh, play about um, labour issues. And again, many of the things were a theme of Bob and Bill's life. Uh, um, Bob was, uh, sorry, Bill was also involved in Band the Bomb um, activities in his um, union when he started working at the Postmaster General. Now what you see start happening at this time, and Bill gave me his ATO records, was that ASIO starts tracking you. And again, I think it's worth remembering that people like Bob and Bill, like so many of us here, who, you know, basically what our work is, is to try and make the world a fairer place. And that there's been security forces wasting the resources of this country, wasting the time of public servant sector workers, out there spying on people. And so the spying here is pretty offensive, I've got to say. Um, they certainly checked into Bill's family. I, from what I can pick up, they're, they're following him from the 1960s. Uh, they used terms like, they've come to our notice. That, that was the, the terms. Um, union activities to do with Communist Party, New Theatre, particularly the Vietnam War, Band the Bomb Marches. Largely what, in this day and age, like, no, sorry, um, in this day and age, um, this sort of spying is obviously quite different. But then, it's largely who went to meetings, what they did, what they said like you know, something that's deeply, deeply offensive. And again, I mean, why why great waste rules and resources on spying on Bill, let alone anybody else here? Uh, after the World War, Bill joined the Postmaster General Office, where he was for most of his working life. He did move over to Holstra um, later on. Um, and then, then we come to uh, when Bill retires. And when he retires, he's... Um, um, recognised as he, took, reti he retired from um, telecom, where, where he ended up after the Postmaster General, on the grounds of um, that he was a war invalid that was recognised that was caused by the war, and now he's totally recognised as totally and permanently incapacitated and legally blind. And I wanted to mention that because I think it makes what I'm about to describe all the more extraordinary. So from, a, from, from about the mid 2000s. Well, uh, Bill, and so often Colin, his son, has been with him time and time again, have been to literally hundreds of actions. 
actions for the environment, on social justice, but particularly, particularly um, on climate, you know, calling for climate justice, calling for climate action, uh, and, and really inspiring actions, actions where uh, you go along week after week, uh, and some of those uh, are, uh, I'll just go to them, because these figures are worth knowing, Miller Coal went to AGL, one of the big fossil fuel companies in this country, once a week for 18 months. There have also been weekly vigils at Santos for the last 66 weeks, and they continue to, to the present time, and they're still running every Friday. And I'm sure there should be some, some, some advertisements for some of them. Thank you. 